Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to talk about Harlow 3.3 and a topic called creating links. Now, when we're talking about links, we're talking about hyperlinks, or better known, of course, as links, or connections between passages. And remember, when we're talking about passages, we're talking about the smallest units and a larger one, a story. So these are often the primary and sometimes only point of interaction between a reader and a story. So as a reader progresses a story, they click on links and it connects between different passages moving between sections of the story. So when we think about links, it's important to kind of understand a distinction between what Twine creates and what Harlow uses. So remember when we use Twine, we are interacting through Twine with that little in-between point being a story format. In this particular case, I'm using Harlow. Now Harlow runs the connections between passages when we look at the HTML version or we use the test or play options within Twine. However, when we're looking at it like this, Twine is making the connections for us. So it's a little bit confusing there, but when we're editing, the connections are made using Twine. When we're running the story, Arlo is doing that for us. So let's talk a little bit about links. There are three primary forms supported by Harlow, and you'll notice some examples of it right here. But let's go ahead and move over to starting pass just so we can see this in action right here. Okay, so I have notice right here, close the door as a link with the text, close the door. In Twine, a visual connection will be shown to the close the door passage. We see right here, a link from this passage to this passage directly as described. In Twine, a visual connection right here, visual connection. And if I move this around, we can see the arrow moves with it. So the primary form of connection, the creation of a link between one passage and another is used right here. Do notice the two open and two closing square brackets. I have two right here and two right here. Now, if we go ahead and start the story, so I go over to build and let's go over to play. Notice this close the door and if I click, click this, it sends us to a different passage. So let's come back over here. We started over here. Notice the little rocket ship starting passage and I went over to close the door. Let's say though that I wanted the text close the door, but I didn't want to go to the passage close the door. There is an alternative form where we can point at the target of where we want to go as an author. So I'm going to use the minus sign and then a greater than sign to create an arrow and I'm going to call this ending. Notice this changed over here. If I close this, this is now the passage ending. I am pointing towards, notice the minus sign and greater than sign, a different passage. However, the text shown to the reader, if we were to play this a second time, it still says close the door, but the result is a different passage. And so that's the second primary form of creating links. The first is just to open and to close square brackets around the text I want, pointing to a very specific passage. The second is I can use the minus sign and greater than sign to point towards a different particular thing. Now let's get this even more complicated and let's show the third form. We can point the other way. So this time a minus sign or a less than sign and a minus sign and I'm going to write close the door and I'm going to take off the front of this. And now it says ending, close the door. Close the door is pointing towards with a less than sign and minus symbol ending. So previously we had a minus sign and a greater than sign. This time we have a less than sign and a minus sign pointing towards the result. In each case, we have right here, close the door pointing towards ending. And of course, if we now play that, we say that exact same thing. So the text shown to the reader is close the door but the result over here is now ending. So, okay, we have three different ways of creating links between passages. And remember, passages are their smallest units within an overall story. So we can create links using doubles open and close square brackets around some type of name of a passage. We can point towards different passages if we want to potentially change the name. Let's talk a little bit about how links and passages interact with each other because this is an important aspect of creating stories within Twine. So I'm going to temporarily move over here to front room, come back over here to passage, and I'm going to change start story here to over here. So let's temporarily play from this point. 
So I started from front room and it says bedroom and kitchen. So bedroom and kitchen. Okay, well, I think I'm in the bedroom as far as my kind of perception of this story as a reader, but I don't see any text. However, I do see this option right here. If I put a little text over it, the tooltip says undo. When we use the Harlow story format, one of the things it provides for readers that we can rely on as an author using the story format is the ability to undo and redo. That is, we can move back and move forward in the reader's perception of the history of a story. Now, let's say I wanted to do that as a reader. Let's undo. I go back one. Notice right here I have bedroom and kitchen. I have gone back one time within the history of my experience of the story. Notice I now have another option that says redo. I can redo and undo. But notice I can't go back any further because this was my starting passage. Now, if I had moved multiple places, potentially I could move all the way back to my beginning and then redo it all the way back to wherever I was. Now, this is potentially very helpful when you're thinking about the experience of a reader when you're designing as an author. But there's another option we could take as well. And this is a very solid option of using undo and redo, but we don't want to get too reliant on that. So we have bedroom and kitchen. So let's move back over here. Okay, I'm over here in bedroom as an author, but what I want to do though is I want to provide functionality, that is provide a link, some type of interaction, so they can go back to the front room. I'm going to create a link right here. And so now if I close this, we see the arrows between bedroom and front room, front room to bedroom. So if I again play from here, bedroom, and I can go back to the front room, bedroom, and I can go back to the front room. Notice there's now the ability of interacting between these two different passage locations. So let's extend this even more. I now want kitchen. And now I can go from front room to bedroom, from bedroom to kitchen. Now let's do the same thing over here. Front room and bedroom. Notice I'm using two open and two close after each time. And as you may have noticed, Twine was helpful to me and said, oh, it looks like you're creating a link and provided help based on the name. So now I can move from the front room to the bedroom, the bedroom to the kitchen, and all other iterations as well. Notice the arrows pointing back and forth as well. So when I play, I end up over here, and I can move throughout the house with each room referencing the other rooms in turn. Now this is incredibly useful because while some readers may get used, of, may get used to using the undo and redo buttons, we also want to provide links to allow them to move throughout a potential space. And the reason for that is because a reader may get used to the interaction of clicking on links. After all, it is the primary interaction. So we want to support the assumptions or expectations a reader has when they move into a story. So let's review everything I've talked about in this video. We have passages, the smallest units within a story, and we can create connections between these passages by creating links. We create links in three different ways. The first is we use two open and two close square brackets around the name of a passage to create a connection. The second form is within those two open and two close square brackets, we can point at the location of where we want the reader to go as a result of the interaction. We can use either, as I showed over here, a minus sign and greater than sign, or as I showed in the last set, a less than sign and minus sign to point, create a little point at the location we want to go to. We also saw that the expectations a reader brings to a story are also important to consider when creating a story within Twine. There are some cases where we may want a reader to use the undo and redo functionality as part of Harlow, but there might be other situations where we want to provide those interactions for readers, and so we create multiple links between passages, just in this example here, front room to bedroom, bedroom to kitchen, kitchen to front room, creating a kind of cycle within the space and allowing someone to move to different locations represented as different passages. And so this allows us to, again, support the primary interaction of readers with stories, that is, clicking on links. Thanks for watching.